So for the 100th anniversary of Wilmington Friends Meeting, we were able to open this time capsule that had been buried when the, when the building was constructed. And it had all sorts of cool artifacts in it. It had things like this light bulb, which I assume symbolized inner light. That's what it was symbolized now, and I imagine Quakers then were thinking about the same thing. As we were planning for our 150th anniversary, we were thinking about this box and thinking about the ways that we record our history and record our stories. And we decided that instead of doing something like this box, what we wanted to do was a video time capsule, something that would allow us to record stories, record voices, record faces, record the things that we wish that we could have from friends who were here 50 years ago or 100 years ago. As we sat in the planning committee, we wished that we could hear them telling their own stories and hear what mattered to them about this meeting and why they were here. So that's what we wanted to leave behind for the next celebration, maybe the 200th celebration of the meeting. We wanted to leave behind the stories of people in this meeting, their faces and why they were here. forward to just being with my sister and my mother and I like doing the fun up activities upstairs. I like the values of peace more than anything and quiet. For me it's all about like being in the quiet and it is kind of nice to be in this meeting where there's a little bit more structure. You know you've got some hymns inserted and you've got Julie doing her little sermon but my favorite part of coming here is the peace and quiet, and I really value the social justice views on it as well. <laughs> the spices, simplicity, peace, integrity, community, equality, stewardship. So I think that kind of uh, distills Christianity in so many ways, and it's it makes it easy and hard at the same time. It sounds simple, but it's really difficult to follow spices each and every day. But um, I think that um, reflection, personal reflection, a, a personal relationship with God and with Christ, um, all of those feed into that for me, the Quaker experience. Oh, well, I grew up in the Church of the Brethren, which is a similar church. Uh, we're both historic peace churches. We both have uh, an affinity for a simpler lifestyle. And uh, so that was that's, that's attractive. Uh, I work at the Quaker College, so we kind of figured we'd come here anyway, but uh, it, it, it was nice to have similar beliefs. Well, I think a lot of it came from my childhood where, um, where I just always felt God talking to me and, and, and always always in my life and uh, I, I grew up secular but um, when uh, when I was searching and I, but I always felt him right so when I was searching for um, for a place to go here in in Wilmington I, I looked up the Quaker faith and I found that it was basically just everything that had always been in my life I just didn't know so I guess I guess that'd be it well my father and grandparents were Quakers and they attended the Fairview meeting in uh, near Nubiana. And I was born in 1928 in a farmhouse uh, not far from Fairview Church. And I'm a birthright Quaker. And uh, I attended, I don't remember attending the meeting at Fairview because we moved to Wilmington in 1935. And I was seven years old. And I started attending the Wilmington meeting. So my family goes back a long time in, in, uh, in Quaker history as far as being Quakers. Well, I got a job at Wilmington College in 1965 and I had been to seminaries and uh, actually with my parents I'd gone through several churches but I was quite impressed by what is often referred to as third uh, force in Christianity. Protestant, Catholic, and then this third force, which is made up of groups that uh, tend not to conform so much to traditional Christianity. Mennonites, Amish, Quakers, 
Duke of Bors, a lot of them really. And um, I was impressed. Um, I started going here with my parents um, from birth and then um, I, so I sort of had to come to church, but since then um, I've really enjoyed um, coming here every week. Um, what really draws me, I think, is uh, the community that surrounds us here. Well, I was born into a Quaker family, so um, it's inherited and uh, I stuck with it. And when I became a Quaker, when I got married in 1951, um, my husband was a minister and <clears throat> At first it was a little difficult because I came from a very conservative background and it took me a while to adjust to the freedom of expressing how you really feel instead of regurgitating what somebody had told you ahead of time the way you should feel. So I liked that. Married a Quaker so therefore you come and um, the church I went to as a child is not around here, it's United Church of Christ. So you kind of follow in the footsteps, it's easy. I like Quakerism, I like the calmness of it, and I think they do a lot of good things for the world. Their belief that everyone, regardless of anything you do or anything you come to this meeting and this faith, faith with, everyone is deserving of God's love. I like the idea of the, the idea of the light within, that, that God is in everyone, and that's what Quakers believe, and so um, there's, uh, everyone is good, no matter what they've done that's bad, we still accept them, and we are there for them to support them. I was um, really born into this group, so it's been, you know, what I've been hearing most of my life. It was the familiarity of everything that brought me back to the faith of my childhood. Yeah. Um, we moved here in 1972, and um, we were, were Mennonites, and so um, in this community there's not a Mennonite church, but the Friends Church was here and its peace mission is very similar to the Mennonites and so um, that's what drew my family here to um, Wilmington Friends. So the peace draws us to this and their understanding of witnessing and um, the conscientious objector and um, the peace testimony is what draws us here. I was raised predominantly here so part of that is just proximity and also um, I just really like the view of inner light and that we all carry part of Christ with us at all times. Well it's certainly something I've grown up with. Uh, just when I explore Quakerism more and more and see it in comparison to other religions it just speaks to my my beliefs and thoughts much much more than any other. I've always grown up like in this faith from when I was very young. Um, mom and dad always brought me here with my brothers and it kind of grows on you as time goes on. So it's just one of those things that it's good and it's not bad so you just stick with it. I get to uh, sing. Well the, the Quaker uh, beliefs are to me just simple beliefs. Uh, and you're not necessarily told what to do like you are perhaps in other religions. Uh, your, your beliefs come from it within you and as we always say, there's a, a bit of God within all of us. And it, it's, it's just a simple way to believe and uh, I've done it for well on to 70 years now. So. Um, I think it was the peace testimony and um, the social justice issues and um, I was a student at uh, Wilmington College and got acquainted with the Quaker um, faith that way and so searched for a church later when we got married and this is where we ended up. I didn't really know too much about 
Quakerism until we moved here. Uh, there was a student at my college that was Quaker, and I don't. I wish I could remember the quote that he quoted to us, but it was something about it, it, inclu including all, arms around everyone, and I really liked that concept. And once I learned about Quakerism being here, I thought, I think I've been a Quaker all my life, because they really, the, the, I think the peace um, is, you know, the statement is so, so powerful, and I think the church that I grew up in um, was not it was not that really part of the of their doctrine and I think you know thou shalt not kill is includes every every situation and all the peace is it was a very strong um, strong statement for me <laughs> and I think just the simplicity it was still working on the simplicity but the simplicity aspect of the Quaker belief was such a that was kind of a new concept for me, and I really think that was a that's a good one that I think we all should perhaps adhere to. And I think a lot of the younger people are doing that, which is good. Flexibility, because my understanding of Christianity is not particularly clear. I appreciate a a format that allows me to be accepted completely, no matter what I'm believing on a certain day. I believe in the peace testimony, that makes sense to me. I guess the whole spice thing in general, all of that simplicity and peace and all of those things, they, they really speak to me. But more than anything, it's the flexibility that I can be in any phase of where I am in my personal belief system and still be an integral part of this meeting. What draws me towards the Quaker understanding of Christianity? Um, I I grew up uh, like raised in a Christian church, uh, more evangelical. Uh, it was Church of Christ, actually. And I grew up in Wilmington, or well, outside of Wilmington, um, in Sabina. And... Um, I always knew Wilmington was a Quaker town, but I n never really thought about what that meant. Like, I knew that they were instrumental um, as abolitionists, but that was about the extent that I knew about Quakers. And so I go off to college, and as a lot of college students do, they reevaluate their, re their faith um, while they're in school. And I'm just like looking at Christianity and saying, uh, like asking myself, like, what do I actually believe um, with this? And I was coming really close to the conclusion that I don't really know if, if this is what Christianity is, I don't really know if it's the best thing for me. Um, because a lot of the things that um, I was exposed to going to school in Cincinnati was um, you have all these societal issues like with uh, race, sexuality, and like gender identity that the church wasn't really um, dealing with very well. Um, and here you have like Quakers that are dealing with race for decades. Um, and um, obviously like there's, there's still imperfections here and there, but um, there was a willingness uh, for that dialogue. Um, so I moved back uh, to Wilmington to take a job at the Clinton County Regional Planning Commission in May and I just live uh, down the street at, in the, it's, it's the Chamber of Commerce building but they actually just moved out um, so it's at 100 West Main and I can see the church from my house so I, I thought about giving it a try, um, mainly because I, I found out that they were, um, they, um, were willing to perform uh, same-sex marriages. And when I moved back to Wilmington, I thought there was no way in heck there would be a church that would be progressive enough to be willing to do that. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll give it a try. Um, 
And so at this point, I don't really know much about Quaker Christianity. So I don't even know what got them to this point that they were okay with that. So um, I show up one Sunday and, uh, you know, it, it seems like a pretty like traditional service and everything. And uh, you have, they have like about 10 minutes of silence, which was uh, new to me. And uh, that was really refreshing to me too, because I had come from like evangelical megachurch, like where um, you have like the fog machines and like the lights and the electric guitars. And then whenever I would go to a church, I would like leave afterwards and say like, well, I didn't really like how they did this or like, the fog machines were a little bit too much. <laughs> but like with with um, going to a Quaker meeting, um, you can't argue with silence. And it's like, there's nothing you can really critique about it. And even when I bring friends here now, um, I've been going for a couple months. When I bring friends here, it doesn't matter what tradition or denomination they're from, they always say, I really like the silence. <laughs> So it's, it's universal, um, and I think a lot of, um, it's really a treasure in the, um, the Quaker tradition that um, a lot of people aren't aware of, I wasn't aware of until I tried it out. Um, so I think, just to backtrack a little bit, one of the things that do draw me to, the, to Quaker Christianity is just, um, the acceptance for all people, like men, women, um, all races and genders, um, sexualities. Um, at least that, I think this meeting does a pretty good job of that. And um, just um, an emphasis on contemplative practices, like, uh, like the silent worship, which I really like. Um, and just being in community with uh, other Christians that are trying to practice simplicity uh, in the way that they live. And just the fact that um, I sense that a lot of people genuinely strive to make a difference in their community. Um, since my, like my, my job and my vocation is doing the community planning and community development and here, I feel like you have a meeting where people, they, they stand up every Sunday and they talk about um, things that they're concerned about in the world and things that they're uh, working to address um, with uh, social issues going on right now. My very first meeting I went to was on Veterans Day. Um, and if you know anything about Quakers, it's uh, everyone has different views on it because of the history with uh, uh, conscientious objectors. And I'm used to going to Veterans Day ceremonies where um, we sing Battle Hymn of the Republic and we fly the American flag and um, like we're it's pretty darn close to having a military parade. But when I came to the first meeting here on Veterans Day, um, someone stood up during the meeting and said, we have to also think about the, the people who became a veteran because they were drafted against their will. And they still fought for our country and like we thank them for that. But a lot of people didn't have the choice in it. And so that was a perspective that, a perspective of compassion, but also objection that I didn't really see in other churches. And so it's that kind of stuff that's always challenging me, how people are constantly raising these social issues, um, but in a compassionate way, which um, I strive to do. I'm not always the best at it, but um, it's, I think you have to be in community to grow um, those talents. Um. When we first moved to town, um, Larry Barker was the minister, and he helped us find a house. And I'd set up as a choir director, and he said, would you like to pay your rent 
by directing our choir. And I said, sure, why not? So, been here ever since. That was 19, what he what? 1974. Um, the individuality of everyone having their own beliefs. Um, it kind of, I think we kind of bounce off of each other. Like our, like in our Sunday school class, um, we get off topic a lot and we um, kind of bring our ideas together, but in the end it all goes back to the original idea. Okay. Um, one of the things that draws me to Quakerism is that it's not creedal. You not ask, do you believe this? You not, we don't, um, I, as many churches do, we don't repeat a creed every Sunday. We don't recite the Apostles' Creed or a, a denominational creed. And that's important to me is that what I believe is is what I believe and I don't have to justify it or um, believe what the pastor says I ought to believe. So that's, that's a big part of it. Um, the aspect that we are all friends and no matter our differences, we are able to openly talk about them and have people listen and put their input on it. And it just, it's a nice way to feel like you belong somewhere. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think it's an important, I, sorry. Um, being friends is just, you don't have to necessarily be best friends, but knowing that if you're going through something, you can have a place to go and have people to talk to and feel comforted. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't know. I come to this church because my mom comes here like my me and my mom they, we're the only ones that come here and I don't know it's just a peaceful place and I know like everyone in this church and it's such a small church that you can connect with everybody I just like that about it well, I think the fact that it allows all of us to be ministers and that we can uh, work wherever we're at we can grow where we're planted we don't have to there's nothing wrong with the people that are in that for the ministry themselves, but if you've got a different profession, you can still take your faith with you and try to try to uh, uh, use that throughout your day too with your life, I think. All right, thank you. Um, I really like how, how much freedom there is in it, how you can be one, you can be one thing or you can be another, but all together you're still a Quaker and you can feel like yourself while being surrounded by everyone else. I've for me, it takes me a long time to like open up to people, to feel a sense of community. And so in my real life, or like my outside of church life, it's kind of like, I am I feel very individual. And then when I come here, I feel like the love and support and I feel like part of a community, I guess. Okay. My parents first came here, I know that I mean, Quakers don't believe in baptism, but I was dedicated here when I was a little babe. And um, I didn't actually start coming back until I was in undergrad at Wilmington. And um, started just coming back to spend more time with my grandma and my grandpa while he was alive. And fell out again for a little bit, but came back when I moved back to Wilmington from Cleveland. And um, it's just, the, I guess the best thing that happened to me is being around a bunch of people that I know in community. That's, it's been really nice to be a part of a group of people that I feel share a lot of similar values. I don't always see to eye to eye, but morals at least. <laughs> I think it's the support of the people that are here and the support of my family and my kids. Um, we moved here from another meeting um, specifically for um, our sons to be able to have other youth to be involved with. It was, we felt it was really important in their growing process and um, we were sad to leave our other meeting. It was a wonderful um, rural meeting in this area, good salt of the earth people, but um, there really weren't kids there and we needed that. So to me, I think 
support of our kids and of myself and my husband, our family as a whole. I mean, I feel like this is an extension of our larger family here, so. I'll, I'll uh, answer that with uh, how we, how our first visit here. Uh, we moved to Wilmington in late December and uh, a week after we moved in, a very, very good friend of mine, Greg Tipton, who attended here, dropped dead. And the, so the first time we walked through the door of this meeting house was for his visitation. And uh, everyone was so incredibly welcoming and comforting that uh, that, was, that was a really good thing. Um, there's been a great sense of community. Um, we've met a lot of great people who have been real, real kind to us and um, real helpful. Uh, I know I can always count on everyone. Uh, and uh, my faith has grown so much and, and my understanding of um, what God wants for me and what, uh, what he wants for the world. I remember serving on the board of, uh, I'm on the board of trustees now, but I served on the board of trustees for several years, uh, many, maybe 20, 30 years ago. And uh, I have uh, memories of uh, a pastor named Joseph Neal, who uh, was with us for several years. And I had uh, a bout with depression, a very serious depression. Uh, not just that, just, you know, I don't feel well today. I'm kind of depressed. I was even in withdrawal. And I was on medication, but I met with Joseph and I think uh, I attribute him and our discussions together and our meetings together to uh, bring me out of that very serious depression. Uh, that's one event I remember and other things that we've had. Uh, I remember when uh, the, the church built this addition. We had our Sunday schools had to meet in the corner of the up up on the balcony, there's rooms in the corners, and some of the Sunday schools met in those. We didn't have uh, in some of the basement areas. So this was a, a big thing. We had like Mr. Thorne, whose picture's over there on the wall, who provided funds for this, and, and uh, many of the former community leaders who, met, who were in this church and who raised money to build this, this building, this addition for Sunday school and uh, the room that we're in now, yes. But I have so many fond memories, it's hard to remember uh, all of them. I mean, certain ones, but uh, I'm really, uh, this meeting has meant a lot to me over my years. Well, I think it's given me the opportunity to uh, be an activist. I'm not just well, for me to be a believer is to be active. And uh, most of Christianity is rather passive. And uh, I uh, came to believe that it needs to permeate all of your life, not just uh, Sundays. And um, it gave me some opportunities um, to do a lot of that. And I uh, became. became active in uh, Quaker organizations, nationally, internationally. And uh, it was through this meeting that I was able to do that. I think the best thing is about three years ago, my daughter got married here, so that's the, probably the best thing. I can't think of like one event. It's just um, the congregation and um, I'm involved in the choir and the bell choir and uh, learning about Jesus and Christianity. Oh, there was a lot of good things. Um, probably one of the best things, my husband died last year with uh, vascular dementia. Up to that time, we had been very active. He taught Sunday school, I taught Sunday school, we sang in the choir. And <clears throat> it became obvious that he could no longer do that, but he could come to church. And when he did, people talked with him and he always had, he always had a big smile. 
And once in a while, after everybody was gone, he'd say, who was that? <laughs> and it was people he knew, but they were very, very kind to him and to me too. And they have been just very supportive since his death. I couldn't ask for a better, better people to be around. The best thing that's happened to me here is probably um, the amount of youth um, that we've had due to our small numbers sometimes we really do have a large group of youth so that has really been helpful. Everything? Um, I think the silence. That time every week where the rest of the world melts away and I sit with these other fellow Christians, these other beautiful children of God and I get to sit in silence with them and just feel God's presence and just wait and, and get to feel that. That's, that's the best thing. We've been here for many years and, and my children um, went here. And now my daughter has come back with her three daughters and her husband and they are now members of, of this meeting. And so to see that, that what she took, what we gained from being members, that she too wanted her children to experience this as well. I think that's been a real rewarding experience. The best thing that's happened to me in this meeting house, being able to get involved with a with a group of people, seeing them, working with them, and that uh, that interaction is is very important to me. It's still been a very positive uh, aspect of my life since I've been active in this group. Like I said, I like singing songs and learning about God. Probably one of the best things that's happened to me in this meeting house is any of our youth group functions. Like a lot of overnights have happened here, a lot of silly long conversations and games and just all around silliness. It's great. <laughs> I, I would say just the, the dedication of uh, our children, uh, Tanya's and my four children, uh, it's probably been the most wonderful Thing. The ability last year to go on a mission trip with the college students to Belize, that was a great experience for me. Um, probably raising my children in this um, meeting and the friends that we met here and um, we did particularly um, have an affinity for um, Joseph Neal and his family and our kids were around the same ages so that was a really nice time in our life. Friendship, that's the best thing that has happened to me in this meeting house. I came here for music um, because I wanted to have some place where I could sing in a choir. And I've been a member for, uh, I was a member in the 80s, that's when I became a member. Then I moved away and then I was, I did not go anywhere for a long time. And then in the 2000s, someone said, oh, you should come and sing in the choir, and you should meet Julie, she's our new pastor. And I came to sing in the choir for some anniversary type thing. So music brought me, friendship keeps me. And so it's those friendships, and it's made my life so much richer, uh, having the friends that I've made here. They're different than any place else in my life. Um, quiet, centering down for a while. Um, we all live these crazy lives, so I'm glad to be um, sitting for a while. Um, I appreciate being challenged by what's spoken, not only by Julie, our pastor, but also um, others when they rise to speak in meeting. Um, I love the music and the hymns take me back. This meeting is a lot like the um, Presbyterian church that I grew up in it is, as a kid, a smaller congregation, but with a great range of um, age groups and um, kids also from different school districts, which is what I experienced when I was growing up, which I thought was a really neat thing for the kids um, because you weren't all from the same school. So I think maybe some of that um, difficulty you might have in school um, is sort of lessened here because you have this group of um, kids from everywhere so and they've supported each other through different things too so I look forward to the music 
the music isn't always as prominent as I would like it, but I, I really enjoy the music. I look forward to uh, I look forward to seeing everyone and, and catching up. I also look forward to uh, uh, how God will work on me each each Sunday that I come and and what He will what He'll what He'll show me and uh, what He'll say you know what what my next mission is in life, big or small. I have always, even from the beginning, uh, liked the Quaker uh, philosophy of uh, the inner the inner self communicating with God. I, I like the, the silence of the meeting. Uh, we, have, we have a structured meeting and that we have a pastor and we do have, we do sing hymns and we do uh, something like you might find in a normal, some other churches, but we stand out and I look forward to the fact that we have a periods of silence where we can communicate and I can stand up and express my inner feelings, which I do, I haven't done a lot, but I do occasionally. And it's that, it's the thing that I like about our Quaker philosophy is the lack of uh, accoutrements and things that, those are things that, that a lot of churches use to embellish the the church. I'm not opposed to people who do that, but the simplicity of uh, of our religion and the fact that we we don't like we don't vote and count votes. We we have a meeting of the minds on issues of importance, and we'll uh, bring them up in a monthly meeting and and decide on them and, and come to agreement on things by by consensus and not by uh, taking a vote and counting. So there are many things like that, but the sim I think the main thing is the inner self and the uh, silence and the simplicity of our meeting. Oh, I think uh, mixing with like-minded people, uh, as perverse as they might be, uh, still they're good people, and uh, uh, it's a basis for some encouragement, encouragement for me, and uh, uh, I enjoy the people I've met here, and uh, the lives they've lived, and the manner in which they've assisted me. Um, the sense of community and meeting together with people of more or less the same mind and supporting each other. I think for me it's been a really refreshing because I come away knowing a little better what I believe and what I feel comfortable to tell other people about. Uh, for instance, um, and water baptism, you know, there's, and I finally came to the conclusion, yeah, I believe in baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit, where I'm totally immersed in believing that God can lead me, total immersion, you can call it baptism or whatever you want, but that's and I feel comfortable with that. If anybody now says, I understand Quakers don't believe in baptism, I say, oh yes, they do. It's total immersion into the life of Christ. You know, how much better can that be? Coming, um, I really enjoy seeing all the youth as well as everyone else. I just love talking to everyone before and after meeting. I think it's fun to learn about how Christ was um, nice to all people even if they were mean to him. The silence, um, the the peace. And and Julie's sermons are beautiful. Um, it's it's that combination that she has of the message itself and the almost poetic way that she can put it into words. Um, so it's it's that combination of the message and the word choices she uses um, 
it really, I look forward to that. I think just being here, well, one of the things is, I know when I first started, my children were young and they were little and I wanted to come here for the five to 10 minutes of quietness. It was one of those quiet times when they were downstairs and I was sitting there and it was just peaceful. But I do uh, like coming here to be with people in this community who support you and, and, and are there for you when you struggle, when you have a loss, when you are happy, when you're celebrating. There's always that uh, family that they represent that you know it's a safe place to come. Getting a new spiritual rejuvenation for the week and saying hello to people and being a part of a religious group because I always went to church as a kid. The uh, opportunity to sit quietly and um, think about things. We've uh, had some very good ministers over the years that have brought messages that are really uplifting. Okay, so what do you look forward to most about gathering, gathering for worship? Um, the quiet time, the music, um, the way the worship service is set up, um, the inclusion, inclusion of everyone, um, everyone's a part of the meeting, um, the children's story, being an educator, the children's story always um, I thought was so meaningful to the children to be to make sure that they felt like they were an integral part of the worship service. Part of what I look forward most to about gathering for worship is Julie's humor. Because you can pray. The quiet. I like the silence. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm drawn more towards meditation style stuff, so for me that's my time to be with myself and actually quiet my mind. It's nice. I would say seeing familiar faces, uh, getting a chance to uh, really put as many of the outside world things out of your mind and uh, just begin to think about what you can do to, to help others and be as Christ-like as possible and uh, just make, make the world as good of a place as possible. Getting to, to talk with my friends, uh, Big F, Little F, um, and, and just the, the companionship, I mean these these folks in our meeting are are more than just people we see on Sunday. You know, they're they're people we see throughout the week, and uh, it's it's like a a community. Enjoy singing in the choir. We don't have a choir anymore, unfortunately. And also, Phil started um, a, a bell choir in '87, and um, and I really enjoyed playing in that, but haven't haven't really been doing that lately either. But just the the, the music that's that's here, we have oh, good instruments, and also just the the sense of love and community that's here in in our meeting. <laughs> I look forward to every week coming and having a place where I can sit quietly with my thoughts. That's special and it's sacred and invaluable to me. Um, the silent prayer, because I like the silent prayer because it's, it's a time once a week I can intentionally just be quiet and think about, reflect on how my week went and things I want to do going into the next week and just Listen. I think probably being with the people, with friends, the worship is uh, quiet. We don't stand up and swing around and clap hands and, and stuff like that. It's, uh, I'm not going to say muted, but it's just serene. Um, seeing the same people and we're such a part of each other's lives and seeing how like someone's week goes and seeing like keeping each other posted on happenings in our lives. Um, 
what's most important to me when I come here is that sense of being part of this community. And I know that I matter to people here, not to everybody here. They don't, I mean, you know, we're not all best friends. It's not that. But I know that if I'm not here, I'm missed. And if I have something um, serious happening in my life, um, it'll be noted and, and people will reach out to me. And um, I feel like I can do that for other people. So that real sense of community is, is, is crucial. And the other thing that's important to me is the style of the, of the meeting for worship, the, the pace of it, and the, the reflective time, and the, the um, simplicity of it in a way, and the, and the calm. And when I when I'm traveling, if I go visit family and I go to church with them, or if I go back to where I grew up and go to church there, the service seems busy. You know, it's just bing, 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 one thing after the other, and there's no there's no pause. And so when I'm that's what I grew up with, and I can do that. But when I'm there, I think, oh, I'll be so glad to get back home and have that that quiet. Mostly for Sunday school wise, we are a fun, lively group, I'd like to say. Um, our teachers, like Julie, and when Sam has to sub in for us, she's, they're great and they have to put up with us, but I think they, they handle it quite well. <laughs> yeah, um, we just, since, because most of us have been here since we were babies, so we all know each other really well. And we're not ashamed to share things because we're not going to be judged here. They're great people, and I think they just underst we understand each other really well. I usually like the Sundays where the bell choir plays because I'm in the bell choir. And then after we play, a lot of people compliment us and say how pretty it was, and I like that. I think being understood by the people that I'm worshiping with, even though. Uh, we will have differences, but I think there's leeway here. I think they'll go on ahead and say, well, that guy wears suspenders or that guy's this guy. And, you know, we know him, we know him a long time, and we'll, we'll allow for his foibles, but we still care about him and, and we care about his family. So I, I, I would say that. Um, I look forward to the routine. I always know that we're going we're gonna to get to sing. We're going to get to, like, see the children, learn. We're going to hear stories, and I'm going to get to see all my favorite people, I guess. Um, so current, well, I guess I'll start backwards. So um, within this meeting, I've been involved um, certainly uh, in committees. So I was on Christian Education Committee for a long time and clerked that um, committee for a number of years. Um, currently, I'm clerking the Peace and Social Concerns Committee. And um, Ruthie Snar has been doing um, utility assistance and food vouchers um, with folks on the second and fourth Mondays of the month um, in recent years um, for folks in the community needing uh, that kind of help. And so I've been one of the folks that have helped to pick up those calls now that we don't have a secretary anymore. So um, I pick up a lot of calls during the week. Um, and, and schedule appointments, call people back, schedule appointments, you know, you pick up some other messages too along the way. And um, I've been humbled and um, amazed by the kinds of things that people are going through out there. I know Ruthie would have much, um, many more stories and much bigger stories than I have about those, but I've just got a little sliver of um, what she probably hears from people and there's, there's a lot of hurt and a lot of pain and a lot of need out there. So um, I've done that. And I guess the other thing is I've been to Belize um, once with my oldest um, a few years ago, uh, Ian. We went to the Belize Friends School um, as part of uh, the wider Quaker um, group here with Nancy McCormick and Mike McCormick and um, college students and some folks from other meetings in the area, yearly meeting, and um, helped out at the Belize Friends School, and that was a, a great experience. 
Um, but beyond that, I think Quaker Focus has pretty much been, you know, within our meeting or within this, this area meeting and then trying to bring other folks in, you know, American Friends Service Committee, get some information from that. FCNL, I have not been to Friends Committee on National Legislation, but all my sons and my husband have. Um, so there's, there's a lot out there, so. Uh, well, like I said, I, I work at the uh, college, so that's uh, in a sense uh, uh, some outreach there. I've, I've done uh, your father's kitchen several times, and I teach Sunday school. So that's, I think, probably my the most prevalent outreach that I've done? Um, I suppose at this moment, so I've, I've uh, identified as a Quaker for well, about three years, so I'm still kind of a newbie and I haven't done too, too much. Uh, I do a lot of educating as to what that is. Um, a lot of people don't understand it. And they, they kind of, I some people think of it as, um, as uh, kind of farther out from Christianity than it, than it is, so it's it's nice to educate. So I I do that. Um, besides that, uh, I do um, a decent amount in the meeting, um, just helping with uh, helping with hospitality and such, and and uh, uh, any charitable uh, events that they do. Uh, besides that, uh, not much yet, but but I'm hoping to. <laughs> I have not been involved in any mission. Trips, but I've been. In, I was for a few years. I served with uh, Pastor Joseph Neal. Every week, we would uh, interview people who needed help, food. We had a food, uh, some food pantry here, and uh, maybe they would need something for their uh, electricity to keep it from being cut off. So he, he, and I together, and some other members, we I. I were, for a few years, I would sit in a room over here and uh, and talk to people who were in dire need and didn't have any other source of, of help. So we could either give them money for an electric bill or uh, to fuel for winter, or we would say, well, you could go back and choose some items from our food. It wasn't a huge food pantry, but something like that. And at one time, many, many years ago, I'm a school, I was a school principal for 20 years of my life, and I was, I was in education for 35 years at Wilmington. And uh, when I was younger, I used to go to the like FUM meetings because, I mean, my grandma was, <laughs> has always been a part of the Quaker church, and um, my parents were involved for a little while, so I did that as a kid, and I guess really the only real outreach I've been involved in was going to a couple of lobby trips with FCNL. So. Back in the 90s, I started taking students to uh, Washington, D.C., the Friends Committee on National Legislation. And that has grown. And now, with the last, since that time, actually, in the mid-late 90s, I started taking students there, teaching them how to lobby. And now, um, for many years now, uh, a busload of students from Wilmington College goes and um, learns how to lobby. And lobby, uh, FC now is considered a lobby in the public interest. So, peace, justice, environment, these kinds of things. And as far as I'm concerned, that theoretically at least should be the concern of Christians and particularly Quakers, the history of Quakers, uh, slavery and so many different things. Very impressed me a great deal. Quaker one? Well, for a while I was the president of uh, the yearly meeting that includes uh, Quaker churches in southwestern Ohio as well as in the mountains of Tennessee. <clears throat> I was the USFW president, the United Society of Friends Women. <laughs> I have to tell you, this is a funny thing. We were going to have an um, international USFW gathering somewhere in this area. Our yearly meeting was in charge of it. 
Well, we visited different places, and one of them was some place in, in Columbus, and I told him ahead of time what we wanted. And when we went in, the gentleman who was interviewing us wanted to know a little bit about, he, after a while he said, you know, I thought you said United Society of French Women, and I wondered what we were getting into. <laughs> I bet he did, because <laughs> we sure didn't look like French women. <laughs> oh dear. Well, let's see. What was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Here, here at the church, what I've been involved in is several things besides teaching a Sunday school class and singing in the choir. Um, there are books around. I don't know if I don't see any in here. There are picture albums. And about, oh, 30 years ago, something like that, one day I thought, you know, it would be good to have sort of a pictorial history of what's going on. And so I just began snapping pictures and I, finally everybody now knows I'm going to do it. <laughs> so anything that's Christmas, anything, a special event, I take pictures of it and I label who it is because even now, when I go back to the early, early ones, I think, oh my goodness, I forgot that what she even looked like. Now I remember him. I've done a lot with Your Father's Kitchen and um, Salvation Army. Um, I plan to go to FCNL this spring. We do, once we did a food drive with like our friends and family, it's pretty fun. Well, right now I work with our teams that work in your father's kitchen, and I also work with the um, youth in our group. Um, I'm very, 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 very blessed that I get to help with the Sunday school and um, be a part of planning things for these wonderful children. Probably not as much as I should, but we do um, support the, your father's kitchen and. I'm a team leader on one of the, the um, groups that go there the first uh, Saturday of the month and uh, it is rewarding to be able to serve those who are less fortunate and who have needs that I feel grateful for that I don't have that and I want to share, and it does give you the opportunity to feel like you are doing something good for the community. Well, right now I'm collecting stamps out there to send to Earl Walker, and these are older stamps, canceled, and then I send them to him and he gives it to a Quaker ministry in California. Then I'm also working with Friendly Explorers, Friendly Explorers is a group, mostly seniors, but you don't have to be seniors. And two or three times a year, I arrange a local trip. I just help with all kinds of things. I feel that my job now as a retired teacher is to help others. Well, uh, I'm on a team that helps with your father's kitchen. Um, I've substituted in the office before. Um, I uh, go to U United Society of Friends Women. It's a women's group that raises money for mission or Quaker missions. Well, I for a time uh, I was a representative uh, to something called Friends World Committee on Consultation, and so FWCC serves as an umbrella over the wide diversity of friends, from people who still wear the plain clothes and say thee and thou, to wide-eyed liberals, to uh, to staunch biblical literalist conservatives, people with all of those different uh, beliefs claim the name friend and FWCC tries to provide a um, place where all of those people can come together and just talk to each other. Being a part of the education committee we had a youth minister so we would um, go on um, trips, um, we went to the um, Heifer project in the summer, we would go on skiing trips to Michigan, um, just being a part of that, going to the United Nations. Um, and so I would say the importance of getting youth involved and in their commitment, um, those were really highlights of our experience. Things like 
uh, our father's kitchen. Our father's kitchen is the uh, place where folks come to have meals uh, and uh, our, we have like four groups that go down there and serve on uh, Saturdays. And the, some of the folks are homeless and some of them are just not able to, uh, you know, have enough to eat. This started back uh, when we had uh, a real economic downturn somewhere around 2008 and it's continued so I, I think there's still a need for it. Well my daughter and I went to FCNL in Washington one year and that was really interesting and um, I've assisted with the food cupboard at the meeting and then we've been involved with um, our father's kitchen. Well your father's kitchen I used to be a captain for that, but now I think everybody participates, or most everybody participates in, in that. Uh, the raised bed garden that Phil started, I forget how many years ago, weeding and planting with that. I've been on a lot of committees here in the meeting. Um, my wife helped some out at a Quaker Knoll with, years ago with the, with the camp. On a local level, we course to your father's kitchen so that's kind of this formulaic thing that we do every you know few times a year um, where we go and serve um, on a national level I'm a member of the Friends Committee on National Legislation so we go to Washington DC we we lobby for policy that we think will uphold our Quaker ideals so it's it's one thing to believe in something it's a completely another Thing to try to to change the way our laws are make made in order to uphold those beliefs to try to actually create a world that we find satisfying and that we think kind of upholds God's will and and how we should treat each other um, I did outreach um, through volunteering at uh, your father's kitchen um, and then I also helped out with a fundraiser for uh, the school that we have in Cuba. It was a pulled pork fundraiser. Um, and then there were jackfruit options there. So we were pretty progressive with having vegetarian friendly options in 2018. <laughs> um, serving at your father's kitchen. Um, we go on youth group gatherings. Um, until recently, I've not been involved in the wider Quaker world at all. Um, I mean, our, our meeting serves uh, monthly dinners at our lunches at your father's kitchen, and, and I do that, and I put money in the offering plate when there's some sort of special thing going on, but I don't, I haven't personally done like mission trips or that kind of thing. And um, until just recently, I wasn't at all interested in yearly meeting because it seemed not relevant to to my life. And and um, recently, I've become more involved with quarterly and yearly meeting, but it's not those aren't those aren't big things for me. And and nationally and internationally, I'm aware of what Quakers do, and I think it's really important, and I try to support them. E emotionally and maybe fiscally, but not physically. Um, I, last March, I went to Belize with Nancy McCormick from the college, um, along with two fellow um, youth members, Aidan Henson and Sabrina Bowman, and we went to fr the Friends School down in Belize, and we got to interact with the kids and see what it's like, and. Um, bringing different projects to them uh, surrounding um, Christ and whatnot. So that's been an incredible journey for me. And also FCNL, Friends Committee on National Legislation, going with Wilmington College to um, advocate and just reaching out and putting our word in. So I think that 
being able to do that has been such a privilege. I'm going to Belize this March, so that's something that we're gonna do. And I usually work at your father's kitchen in Wilmington. I did that yesterday, and I think that's about it. What kind of outreach have you been involved in? Um, I've also gone to Epstein L with the college. Uh, I try to go almost annually for the last three years, maybe, and just go lobby the Congress, hear other Quakers and issues that they see important. I forget what it's called, but it's like um, a song about Thanksgiving, and yeah. Rock of Ages, you know, our God, uh, God, our help from ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy past. Uh, now I can't remember the rest of the lines. No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I have a favorite uh, Bible verse. It is, um, uh, God lifts up all those who fall, God upholds all those who bow down. It's Psalm 145, 14. I, uh, I love, love that one for forever, so. Yep. <laughs> I don't really, I can't remember any favorites. I, I have some favorite hymns. They may not be Quaker, of course. Uh, we had a very close friend uh, who was a, also a, Quaker, a very strong Quaker named Jane Dunlap, and she wrote a hymn, and uh, we sing it occasionally, and I'm sorry today I can't remember the, the name of it, but I've always liked Amazing Grace, and uh, some of those hymns such as that, and uh, they may not be Quaker hymns, they're used by other, other churches also. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a couple of things for Quakers that uh, I think are based in the Bible. Um, uh, there's that of God in everyone. Uh, a kind of universal idea that uh, everybody is important. Um, there's another one somewhere there. Um, of course, from the Bible, you know, the uh, gospel is summed up in uh, loving the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, strength, and most important as far as I'm concerned, love your neighbor as yourself. My favorite hymn is Here I Am, Lord. Um, my mom has always loved that and I kind of just grown to love it. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I love music, so I'd probably have to say the George Fox song. I mean, we've had it at church camp for a long time and it just feels like a tradition because my dad even learned it at church camp. I think mine is um, Here I Am, Lord, and it just expresses what I pray for every night. And, Every morning when I wake up, it's like, how do you want to use me today? Here I am, Lord. And so I cannot sing that song without tears in my eyes because it, um, it expresses my, my, my sincere desire to, to be what God wants me to be. My favorite is uh, he, he walks with me and talks with me in that hymn. Look for the light in other people and the world. The interesting thing, for years, I'd wake up in the morning and some song was going through my head. And I think, where did that come from? I don't know. But a lot of uh, what I call the hymns, not the hip, hip, hooray stuff. That's what I call it today. Um, scripture, I guess, um, John 3.16 is a good one, Psalm 23, uh, Psalm 151, I think it is, or maybe maybe it's 51, where, where David says that he's so sorry for what he did with Bathsheba, you know, <laughs> and it cleansed me, make me clean again. Those are some of mine just off the top of my head. There's a lot of them, but. I like when, they were building the ark, that Noah was building an ark to save the animals from the flood. That of God and everyone from George Fox, because that really encapsulates 
uh, I think, the, the heart of, uh, of Quakerism, that you can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship uh, with the divine. So that's where the Quakers come up with their equality testimony because if each of us has God inside them, then I have to take each and every person on this planet seriously uh, because they are as much in touch with the divine as, uh, as I am, or at least they have the potential to be as much in, uh, in contact with the divine as, as I am. Uh, and so you can't take anyone lightly. You, you mustn't marginalize anyone because they've got God in them. Promise me, Lord. In our house, uh, we have a little George Fox uh, piece of wood, uh, or a piece of wood with the George Fox uh, quote, let your life speak, uh, or something real close to that. It's probably one of my favorite. <laughs> How do you pick a favorite? <laughs> I like hymns. I, sing, I, I grew up singing hymns and, and we sang a lot of hymns, not just the ones we sang at church, but at home we sang hymns for pleasure as a family. Um, I think maybe God himself is with us. That's the favorite tonight. Let me add to that really quickly. You can answer this as if you're asking. Quakers and music don't always go together. The Quaker faith and the concept of having a bell choir or singing. <laughs> so tell us about that a little bit, about how this meeting in particular is unique, especially when you put it in the context of traditional Quakerism. This meeting has a strong um, heritage of music and um, that's really important to me. That's one of the reasons I, I would not be interested in, in belonging to an unprogrammed meeting. Um, I, I want the quiet, I want the peace, but I don't want an hour of silence. And to me, uh, music's absolutely integral to worship. Um, the, the, there's been a vocal choir here for years and years. Uh, we don't have one right now because we don't have a director and, and it's hard to find church musicians now. Um, and, and the meeting owns um, a pipe organ, a really nice pipe organ in the meeting room, which was a, a memorial gift. But because we're Quakers, Unlike many churches that have pipe organs, you don't see the pipes. The pipes are hidden up in the in the belfry, in the like in the attic. But the organs there, and there are a lot of members of this meeting who really want to have it played and want to hear it. And so I'm not sure exactly how the bell choir came to be, but my understanding was that it was memorial gift money that bought the handbells. And initially, when I've been told, I wasn't here then, when they started a handbell choir, they made them play up in the balcony because they thought it was kind of flashy to, to see these handbells in the meeting room. But now we play down in the meeting room. For one thing, it, it, the, the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top. And um, to haul stuff up and down stairs is just a big job. So we play in the meeting room, but um, it's unusual. Uh, I don't know of any, but I know of other Quaker meetings in the area that have music, um, many, most of them pianos. Um, Chester has, a, has music and sings hymns and so, and there's a friend's hymnal. Uh, we, we purchased a, a friend's hymnal for our, our meeting and we also use another hymnal which <clears throat> has a lot of hymns I'm not fond of, but um, that's neither here nor there. But but this this meeting has a strong tradition of music. Um, whenever we sing, you will know we are Christians by our love. That always, I can really feel the um, love and emotion in the room. Um, there's a song that we sing at Quaker Knoll. It's uh, Sanctuary. I I think I've heard other people sing it, but it's just it it's like the idea of community and all of us coming together and being together. It's hard to imagine it not being this way because coming like again my memories of it as a child to college to now even 
it's always kind of stayed the same and I appreciate that about it now that I understand a lot more about it as an adult. Um, I hope they're still here and I hope they're still kicking and still standing up for what they believe in and social justice and among the Christian community. I, I hope that it's the young people here now, like with all their little grandkids and everything. <laughs> I hope it's the same. <laughs> I don't want it to change. <laughs> our religion, our, our thoughts are going to be vital. And, and you know, I hope that uh, some of the young people are uh, going to keep things going. And, and I, I really feel they will. Um, the building itself, you know, that's, I guess, sort of a monument uh, to our past. and. Uh, I, I would be surprised if it was here in 50 years, but it might be repurposed. So, don't know how to answer that one. Hopefully, still hanging in there, and I, I, hopefully the, the peace um, testament will grow and affect more people realizing that, that war really does not answer the question and hopefully more people will join with this meeting and continue to thrive. The, the building is very strong and and hopefully it will still be here and hold lots of people and, and have lots of good music <laughs> and, and warm meetings and wonderful ministers like Julie is. She's, she's just a she's just a great person. I feel like in our society that there is a really good place for Quakerism. I think because it is so flexible that it can, that people will be drawn to it more and more and more because you know our society is going to change and having this, this whole religion if you would that is just based on being able to interpret things as you need to interpret them that, that is, gives itself to change, I think it's going to be stronger than it is now. Um, hopefully bigger than it is now. Um, hopefully with as many um, unique and vibrant people doing good work um, here within this meeting and within our larger community and the world. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I haven't thought about that. I think so much about just the here and now. I'm not thinking so much about the future, but hoping that we're planting the seeds, especially in our younger um, attenders and members, um, to be carrying on. Hopefully, they they've taken the the seeds from here, and those will grow with them over the years and we'll watch them go out into the world or be back within this meeting doing doing wonderful work for, for God and for this world. I hope I see it right here. Um, small churches are having a hard time these days. Um, kids grow up and they go off into other sections of the country and they don't stay where they grew up and so they don't stay in the churches that they grow up. Some of them don't stay in church at all. Uh, I really hope that that uh, doesn't, that's a tradition that doesn't continue. I hope that uh, that people are drawn to it for uh, the peace that uh, you can experience. I see it being a place of strong community as it always has been. Um, I see it uh, fighting for uh, God's vision in the world as it is still. Um, and I, I see it a place I can always call home. It's difficult uh, for me to say. When I attended the meeting in the 30s, I mean the 40s and 50s, 60s, we filled, we filled the downstairs and, and uh, we had people seated in the balcony. Uh, we had a larger, larger congregation. And uh, our numbers worldwide have remained, uh, have dropped from a uh, the high, I think, maybe there are probably 250,000, I'm not sure now how many Quakers. But uh, many of the evangelical churches and 
some of the other churches uh, have, uh, we've lost members through, of course, elderly members through death and such. I'm hoping that we can, can increase the membership, but we still remain uh, a viable meeting. I've often thought that we have meetings throughout the county, smaller meetings, Fairview, which my parents attended, Chester, Cuba, and those, and they do not have large congregations. It's difficult today to keep operating a church without, you know, with a, a small congregation supporting it. I've often thought that maybe that some of them might attempt to or decide to uh, maybe join the Wilmington meeting and, and uh, get reach the point where they could no longer financially sustain their building and their pastor as such. And uh, but. I don't see this right away, but it, it way down the road it could it could happen. I'm not sure what what happened. It's uh, it's difficult to predict what the future. But uh, regardless of the numbers, we have a very viable meeting and a very wonderful pastor and a very uh, devoted church members. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. It's been a lot of places in the last 150. Uh, at one time it was, I think undoubtedly, the largest church in town. A um, hundred years ago, 150 years ago. Very large, very important. And you can see, actually this building is not very Quakerly. Quakers traditionally have very simple buildings and focus on simplicity and life and living and we're not very good at that. I try, um, but it's, it's, it's difficult uh, in such a materialistic, competitive, capitalist world. I think the church, uh, the meeting for worship will be still evolving. Um, I don't necessarily know if it will be housed physically in this building. I mean, it's a historic building, so I'm hoping um, that the building is still an integral part of the community. No, I'm not, not sure. Uh, certainly in the 50 years that I've attended and, and been a member, uh, it has slowly over time gotten smaller numbers, at least uh, attending numbers. Uh, but my, my hope is that uh, new people uh, who, who like what, what it has to share continue to show up and become members or at least attenders and continuing to make a, a large impact in the local and wider communities. To see if it's changed or not. I see it um, larger and I hope to see some of the same faces as there are today. So, there's always change. I, I think we'll still be here. <laughs> I won't be, but... <laughs> I keep reminding the little kids that I see, I say, you know, one day you're gonna be like me. I go, Tell <laughs> it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think we'll be here. Well, I hope it's still here. I hope it's uh, growing. I, I hope it's still a positive force in the community. I don't really know. I, I feel it will still be here. Uh, I feel there's probably going to have to be made changes. And exactly how or what, I don't really probably have the answer for that one. Hopefully still right here. Hopefully still being a part of the community, maybe bigger, but maybe not. I think there is something to the closeness of a small meeting. Hopefully it's thriving. Hopefully, hopefully uh, more members coming here because I think it is the religion, it is the faith, it is where we can see the opportunity for world peace. It is what we believe in is peace and we, we are concerned with social injustice, social 
Um, um, let's see. Geographically, I hope it stays in the same place because I, I like the building. Um, uh, it's it's tough. I mean, I I hope that it, it continues to grow. Um, not just not necessarily in numbers, but just grow in the um, the initiatives that it takes on, and it continues to be um, a, a force for good in Clinton County, in the world, and uh, also a refuge um, for people that need it. Um, so it's really vague and abstract, but hopefully we exist. If not, it was fun while it lasted. I, uh, well, it's impossible to predict, really, but I think it's a good bunch of people, and I really strongly believe in their ch uh, choice of faith, denomination. So I think it'll be fine. Oh, I don't know. I hope it's still a vibrant, important part of downtown Wilmington. I hope it's uh, central to the community as it seems to me it is now. For such a small group of people, I think we have a, a fair amount of impact in the community in terms of individual work and, and as, a, as a group. I think we'd be pretty much the same, just living sim simple and, I don't know, being nice to everybody. I think it would still be here. I think it's still going to be thriving, touching people's lives. It's like it's touched mine. And I mean, maybe not in the same building, but the same community and hopefully generations from this current one that are attending. Have I said peace and social justice enough? Cause care a lot about equality, so I guess that's outreach and love to the world. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would say community. I think, you know, I'm pretty involved community-wise. Um, I'd like to think equality and integrity um, and stewardship. We are um, farmers and we have a certified organic um, small farm operation, vegetable operation. And um, sit, this sits in the midst of a, of a bigger farm that we have. And just thinking a lot um, about kind of the state of where the world is at and predictions that have been made in terms of climate change and how quickly um, Things are moving more quickly than they had originally thought. And so um, I, I'm, while it's always exotic to think about things in other place, places in the world to go and do and be of help. I was a Peace Corps volunteer, so I, you know, I did agroforestry work in another country for a couple of years. I think what I'm realizing is that I have to really be working on my own little piece of earth. and. Um, seeing what I can do to make that better and affecting change in my area. So, first and foremost. There's a story about a, uh, an old order brethren uh, deacon and he was in a bus station and a, a man came up to him and said, are you saved brother? And uh, the deacon responded with, well that's a very interesting question but I think I might be prejudiced on my own behalf. I think maybe you should go and uh, talk to my wife and family and, uh, and while you're there go down to the grocer and, and ask him what he thinks on the matter. And so I think kind of the same thing if you, I, I might be a little biased in my own behalf when I talk about qualities that I might have uh, that exhibit Quaker values, so ask other people. <laughs> Probably integrity or uh, stewardship, I would say. So. Um, I, I, I've went go, reading about the Quaker faith and uh, finding the, the spices, um, I, I found that I, 
I hit all of them pretty pretty well, which which drew, drew me to the Quaker faith. But uh, if I had to pick one, I guess integrity would be a big one. Well, I think I've spoken about that. This the the simplicity of the religion and the lack of uh, of things that many churches have adopted. Uh, so many of the traditional, uh, what were used to be traditional uh, churches, have now gone to a, a more entertainment aspect. I'm not being critical, but it, it's it's not uncommon to go in and see the drum set on the on the uh, stage. In fact, uh, my daughter attends a, a church that has a traditional service, and then they have the non-traditional service. And I've often wondered, uh, you know, they have the the music with the drummer and the and all that kind of stuff. I'm not opposed to that, but it's not it's not something that I feel that I want. I'm, I want the sim simplicity of a of a meeting, which where we can sing some hymns. We have a choir. We have a bell choir. And uh, the silence and, and communicating with God and in our own manner and being able to, of course, others stand up and speak in their churches too. It's not limited to Quakers. But I've always appreciated the uh, the simplistic of the of the church or church religion and such. And uh, I think uh, my feeling about they call it organized religion in the United States has become so so big as far as uh, money is concerned and uh, huge huge budgets and I know this is one church my family goes to that the, the younger minister comes out and then usually it ends with a plea for more funding and such they have a huge budget and uh, we all know about the large churches who have uh, ministers on television. They own several, well, several homes that are multi-million dollar homes, uh, private airplane, uh, many of those things. And uh, yet many of their members who, who meet in their congregation are, might be struggling to, to get by. So. I'm not being critical, but it's not my type of religion. And, uh, but I'm happy that I've been able to, for 83 years, to attend this meeting, and I will continue to attend the rest of my life. My wife was Presbyterian, and we married in 1955, and she came over to Wilmington, and uh, she's also now a very strong uh, member of the meeting in Quaker. Mm -hmm. Well, I think peace and justice, uh, which covers an awful lot. And um, I see growing among Quakers is a concern for the environment. And uh, if we don't have that, we are in serious trouble. I would like to think that of, of peace and, and simplicity. Th those would be two that I that I hope are there. Not being too noisy. Um, <clears throat> uh, just, uh, I don't know if I'd do it, but it'd be nice, but thinking about other people's needs and trying to help them with those needs. <clears throat> I mean, uh, I've been a part of your father's kitchen and that it certainly helps some people meet their needs, and it's, uh, I think it's very good to do that. Um, simplicity and integrity, and kind of just trying to be there for other people, and trying to live on the simpler side of things. Trying not to make everything something extravagant. <laughs> that, that's a very personal question, and I don't know that I could say, well, I see this in myself. I can tell you what I wish 
I exemplified um, peace is the top one and integrity, simplicity, but it, they're hard. You know, I can go through the, the spices, simplicity, peace, integrity, uh, community, equality. They're, they're incredibly important. They're hard. I'm not sure I've achieved them. Okay, very nice. You saw yourself short. <laughs> <laughs> to judge anyone and I try to be nice to everybody and make sure that everyone feels welcome and included and I think that would be it. Um, I like to say I see um, peace and integrity. Um, I, I like to lead with peace. I don't, I try to avoid issues if I can and then I feel like I'm a very, I let, I lead with my morals basically like if I, if this is what I believe that's how I'm gonna lead and so I feel like that's where I display integrity have a viewpoint that is necessary and valid. I find myself, and I always have found myself, to be someone who tries to look at all sides of an equation as it's put in front of me. And so that whole idea of equality and listening to everyone and knowing that we all have equality, that is the one that speaks to me the most.